You're listening to the Activity Strong Executive Edition series on the Bridge the Gap Network. The live webinar series aims to promote, engage, and empower wellness directors and senior living executives to continue the conversation surrounding health and wellness in aging adults. This series is powered by Linked Senior. Welcome, everyone. Uh, echoing what Megan said, um, welcome to this first Activity Strong uh, webinar from 2022. Welcome to 2022. Uh, this is our first, again, first webinar of the year, January 4th, and it's a great pleasure to be with all of you. So welcome. Uh, please enjoy the chat feature, enjoy the education session. A quick, a quick um, note about the chat feature, which is that if you want to chat with everyone, feel free to select the everyone uh, uh, option from the drop down. Today, it's a great pleasure of mine to welcome all of you and to start by sharing a few ideas with you before we get into our education session, which is at the end of last year, we ran a quick survey um, um, from activity and life enrichment professional, resident engagement professionals, trying to understand what they were wishing for other professionals, i.e. you. And as you can see from this uh, little word cloud, this bubble, uh, these were the main things that came out of it. And as you might know at Link Senior and with Activity Strong, we love data. So we went one step further and to try to really understand um, what you are all, what we are all wishing for one another as we start this, uh, this new year. And it's interesting to see that, as you can, from this chart, respect by far is uh, on top of the list. Uh, the pandemic, obviously COVID-19 to go away, is right there also. And then obviously things that we, we really hope uh, to get more uh, from, which are help from other departments, uh, self-care, education, and, and obviously technology to help us in our day. So I think that these are very interesting. Um, the other thing that we wanted to share with you from Link Senior perspective with, with what, what we uh, really want to put in front of you, our, our wishes is, and that is simply, um, may the age be with you. And so you'll recognize you know, probably the, the words from Yoda, which says, may the force be with you. But I think you know, from my personal standpoint, um, like Megan said, my name is Charles de Vilmarin, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Link Senior. You know, we've always been very passionate about engagement. We've always been very passionate about activity directors and life enrichment professionals like you. And none of us ever thought that this pandemic would um, last so long. None of us thought that these times would be so challenging, whether it's the pandemic itself whether it's the uh, staffing crisis that we're going through, whether it's just the fact that we're simply, you know, burned out and, and tired. And I think it's important sometimes to remember why we're here, right? Why do we keep on going? And I wish, to be honest, that I had, um, you know, kind of a silver, like a crystal ball, I think you say in American English, like a way for, uh, for a way to tell you that, you know, the, the future is going to be like this, like this, and like that. And unfortunately, no, no one of us have that. But I, the, the one thing that I would share with you is my personal belief, my, uh, our personal belief at Link Senior when, and with every professional that I speak to is um, things are going to improve. That's one thing. And the second thing is we have done you all have done amazing work, right? I always share the fact that the industry that has been the most affected by this COVID-19 crisis by far is senior living and by far is your work. And what you have done in the last 18 months or more is just amazing. It's, um, it's, uh, I'm very proud of being able to, to know many of you, to work with many of you. And I can tell you that, um, Obviously, eventually things will get better. I think that us working together is the solution. And so with this, as we start this 2022 year, 
you know, my wish is for all of us to continue coming together, uh, is for us to continue collaborating. I have never seen a profession collaborate so much than the activity director profession. And, you know, in the end, may the age be with you, because this is what drives us. This is why we show up at work. This is why we love what we do. And this is why I personally love working with you. So from my heart, from my team, from my family, again, to all of you, thank you for the what you do. May the age be with you. And let us carry on, continue working together, because we deserve it. Our elders deserve it. And again, engagement is essential. So with that, um, let me kind of dive into the presentation that we had prepared for you. Again, this is an Activity Strong Executive Edition. The idea of this Executive Edition is to elevate the discussion about resident engagement with anyone in other departments but also with everyone within our organization. And the idea is to invite, elevate the discussion. So if you are an administrator, an executive director, thank you for taking the time of being with us today. It means that you value, uh, you personally and your organization values engagement. And uh, we want to be thankful for that. We want to thank you for that. As a reminder, Activity Strong is a platform um, led and started by Link Senior in partnership with Activity Connection, NAP, and NCAP. And the idea of this first webinar of the year is for us to share with you thoughts about where we believe engagement is and share with you best practices so we can continue to collaborate. As Megan shared, my name is Charles. I'm the senior co-founder of Link Senior. This is my quick bio, but I think that there are a couple of things that are really important um, about Link Senior and the work that we do. We started seven years ago this platform called Old People Are Cool because, well, one, we're not a fan of this uh, discrimination, segregation based on age, and two, we just believe that everybody is cool, including our elders. And as I mentioned, Activity Strong is this platform that we started at the beginning of COVID-19 and really the essence of this platform, the essence of this work is, one, to acknowledge the amazing work that we all do, that you all do, but also to empower you and to educate you so that you can turn around and, again, improve the life of the elders that you serve. Just to give you a little bit of background on who we are, Link Senior is a resident engagement platform for uh, the senior living industry. So. Today, we touched the lives of 45,000 organizations through leading organizations, some of which you can see on this particular slide. The one common denominator with all of these organizations listed here and beyond is the fact that they value their staff and they value and they care for their residents. So as you can see, we work with independent living, assisted living, memory care, and nursing home providers, and essentially, what we do, our work is simply resident engagement, right? We uh, provide different types of services, including technology, education, and what we help you do is elevate human touch. We're very proud of our work. We're very proud that it's, it's measured. It's actually proven. We had a clinical study that was published in a peer reviewed journal in 2019. And if you have any interest in elevating engagement, we would love to have a conversation with you. So with that, let me dive into our program today. Um, as I mentioned with you, we, uh, we're trying to keep track of the chat feature. As you can see, it's probably busy. If you have a specific question for me, the uh, presenter today, please feel free to either drop it in the chat, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try to look at it as much as possible. But I, I will also uh, check the uh, Q&A feature of Zoom. So with that, uh, let's dive right into it. What I thought we could do and the way we could spend our time together today is just kind of a quick introduction, just one or two slides about, you know, what we are up to in terms of resident engagement and then go into the Quinnigood program, which is uh, where do we stand in terms of engagement? Uh, number three is probably the essence of what I want to share with you, which is um, new thoughts, new ideas in terms of how 
engagement is unfolding and how to improve it. And ultimately the future of our work, which is this whole idea of uh, the social prescription model. So I think the best way to start, and this is probably for some of you that are returning on our webinar, something that I've been highlighting uh, for years now, which is the, the firm belief that um, finding meaning and purpose is a basic human right. And I think that setting it this way is very important for us to, one, remember the work that we do, right, in activity and life enrichment. We are the uh, advocates, we are the defenders, we are the people that are here to promote and ensure that our elders find me meaning and purpose. And the reason why I think it's also important, the second reason I think it's important to reminding ourselves that it's a basic human right, it, it also places a certain degree of importance, right? We know that as humans, we have a set of basic rights. And sometimes, unfortunately, activities and life enrichment aren't respected enough. As you can see from our wishes, um, this was by far the thing that was the most requested or the most wished for. I think that if you put this in perspective, explaining that our work is a human right, obviously it gives a whole other dimension and that inspires respect. If you go into the next step, which is the, the next thought, which is what is resident engagement and how does it function? You know, the, 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 the simplest way of explaining explaining it, the simplest way of boiling it down is resident engagement, activities and life enrichment is essentially collaborating with our elders, right? It's really important when we think about the uh, tenets of person-centered care, you know, some of these core ideas promoted by the Piney Network, the idea that we are here to collaborate to listen to our elders, to meet them every day where they are, right? This is a principle of the validation uh, training institute, the validation method. We want to meet our residents, our elders where they are, so we can think about honoring their preferences. And so in turn, they can live every day with purpose. So with that being said, and again, repeating again, the importance of engagement, Let's take it through today's program with our first section, which is basically what is the state of resident engagement? And some of you might know that we have been doing this webinar series years before actually Activity Strong started. I think we're now into our fourth year. And, um, you know, we always promoted the idea that engagement per se is difficult, but there are definitely best practices out there. So what I did to prepare for today's session is that I look back at years worth of presentation and boiled down some of the key components that we know already existed and obviously through the pandemic have been uh, set forth and, and highlighted and actually become so much more important. And I think that the best way to start is to say that initially, and it's still obviously very much the case, engagement, what you all do is super challenging, right? We, I mean, I speak to activity professionals every single day. And I, I think that none of us as activity professional or life enrichment professional can say, yeah, today my day is super easy. Like my work is already done. I can leave at noon. It's much quite, it's quite the opposite, which is that we always have something else to do. We always have ways to improve. And in many situations, the work that you all do is, is very, very challenging when you think about it from the staffing ratio, but also the fact that uh, the bulk of our elders need us to stay engaged because, you know, they have different, there are different stages in terms of cognitive or physical journey. Their preferences are all unique because they're different, uh, unique individuals. And because of the tools we have, sometimes, I mean, I personally argue that it's, a, uh, it's an almost impossible task. And this is very much represented in the data. When you look at data uh, pre-COVID, I'm sure that some of you might have seen this report because we, uh, um, we, we um, repeatedly advocate for more and better programming. 
you know, before COVID, we were only engaging our residents in the nursing home settings 11 minutes per day and in assisted living only 20 minutes a day. And obviously this begs the question, which is, you know, all right, the quantity isn't great, but what about the quality? And I think that all of us would agree that there's definitely ways to improve. There's definitely ways to improve not only the quantity and the quality of programming. Now that is the situation pre-COVID, right? And so as COVID unfolds, um, and I, I don't need to remind us how difficult it is. I think that for most of us in the US and Canada, we're going through a five, fifth wave now. It's just made our job sometimes impossible. I've talked to many providers in the past almost two years now that have um, mentioned to us that sometimes for days, sometimes weeks, it was impossible for them to provide meaningful engagement to their residents. We uh, ran a survey uh, with almost 400 professionals in October of 2021, and we basically, as a result, saw that only 15% of you professionals are able to engage the majority of your residents in a meaningful way, right? And th this is a problem because we, as an industry, ought to do better. Our elders deserve better. And so if you look at data, and this is a, uh, a quick snapshot of a upcoming uh, white paper that we're releasing, initially just exclusively for clients, and then we'll release it to the rest of, I mean, to everyone else in the marketplace in February. But basically, as you can see, the bulk of us are actually very challenged. So 58% of us report that the primary reason for not engaging all of our residents is staffing. 38 is the uh, uh, change, the uh, social distancing due to the pandemic. So obviously this unfortunately has increased since. And then 68% is just the staffing uh, shortages. So with that being said, you know, the, what's the impact on this? Why, why is this so important? I mentioned that our residents deserve better. I mean, in, in the end, we know one thing for sure is that social isolation, which is one of the results of this pandemic, is that it's a, it's a huge risk and it has a huge impact for our elders. Now, as much as this is a quote-unquote issue, I would say that this is also where the silver lining for all of us lie, which is that since April 2019, we have seen a huge focus, a huge uh, change in terms of perspective when it comes to engagement. And so a lot of our providers, a lot of our, a lot of our owners and operators now understand the value of engagement, now understand the value of your work. And so hopefully some of you have seen the change, but there's been more investment in technology, more investment in staffing, and obviously we, we, we want much more, but there's, there's definitely a trend. I wanted to share with you um, more data also. As I mentioned earlier, we love data, links you, we love data with activity strong. And I think it's important to kind of take it down one level and see what can be measured. So this chart here look at, looks at the number of programs that were offered in a representative uh, smaller data set of our clients. And as you can see, so this is the beginning of the pandemic and these arrows show the different waves. As you can see, each time a wave comes, obviously the number of programs is reduced. But overall, the trend seems to be that we are offering more programs, right? So this was a smaller data set, uh, but again, it is representative and this was shared um, to the public. We share more information with our, with our current clients. But as you can see, there is a uh, quite good positive trend. If you look at the next level, ne ne let's, sorry, next set of data, which is the impact of each wave. I thought it was very interesting to see that at the beginning, just before the, uh, the, the pandemic started, we on this graph could see in orange a predominance of group programs. You know, when I 
went through MEPAP 1, which is the, uh, the introductory course for activity professionals, I remember the course being so, I mean, there was a lot of discussions in the room about group programs. And I think that a lot of professionals before COVID were used to running a lot of group programs, which obviously changed. And this can be seen in the, in the data where as soon as April 2019, we're seeing 50% of programming being delivered uh, through one-on-ones. And I think that this is something that is still happening now. When I looked at our data, again, that is shared exclusively with our clients um, for December of 2021, um, again, we are seeing a huge increase in one-on-one. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important for a number of reasons. One, and that's changed a little bit, but initially we weren't really set up uh, to do, in terms of training, a lot of our team members didn't really know uh, how to conduct one-on-ones. A lot of our CNAs were not comfortable doing so. And then the other thing is, as a reminder, in terms of staffing ratios, we're simply not set up for that. And still today, we do not have, we still miss, we don't have the tools and staffing uh, to, to perform this. So I think if, you know, as a professional, when I look at these data points, what is important is one, when we measure, and I have much more about that in, in a few slides, but when we measure, then we are able to manage. And if all of you, and I hope that the bulk of you, have access to this type of information, but let's say that all of us had this information, we could turn around to our organization, we could turn around to our management, we could turn around to our other team members and say, listen, this is what we need to be doing I need more staff or I need more tools. Otherwise, my residents are simply not going to be able to be engaged at all. And again, lack of engagement leads to poorer quality of life, lower well-being levels. And that means in terms of business, shorter length of stay, higher risk from a compliance perspective, and obviously a much higher cost of caring in turn also an impact on satisfaction. So again, data is crucial for us to collaborate and elevate engagement. Another data set that I strongly, and I hope that some of you have access to is how are residents reacting to programming? And again, this was proven and continues to be proven through uh, these different ways as they come up is, as you can see, you know, uh, this is uh, the, the, the engagement and activity tracking and recording of programs. In blue is active, in orange is passive, in gray is uh, refused, right, and, and yellow is, is sleeping. And here's the interesting piece that we as person-centered care advocate should really, really keep in mind is every time there is pressure on our department, whether it's staffing, whether it's the pandemic, whether every time there's pressure, as you can see, less residents refuse program. So initially when we saw this at Link Senior, we were like, well, why is that, right? Why is it that when there's a wave of COVID or when there's a staffing crisis, why is it that residents are refusing less? And so we interviewed a lot of uh, team members to really confirm this, which is simply that residents are so hungry, they'll take any program. And so I think the lesson here and the strong recommendation, and I hope that you all have access to this information, is that a certain level and we believe it, that it needs to be between five to 10%, a certain level of refusal rate is very healthy. It means that residents or elders have choice and they are expressing it and saying, no, I don't want this, I would rather that, or I don't want that, I'd rather this. And I think that please be mindful that we need to see some level of refusal. I would also highlight, just continuing on this, uh, minutes of residence engagement per day that obviously this is seen through our client base as well. 
And uh, I'm very proud of the fact that in our client base today, the bulk of our clients are at 40 minutes or more on average per day. So way exceeding what it was prior to the pandemic and obviously faring pretty well compared to uh, other operators in, in the marketplace today, just because of the technology efficiencies and enabling interdisciplinary work. So as we continue to go through these challenges, as we continue to collaborate, and as we continue to try to learn, Link Senior is very excited to share with all of you some uh, kind of lessons learned and kind of key um, um, KPIs, which are uh, um, key performance index um, uh, measurements. And we um, like to keep things very simple. And so we propose the 85-35 rule of resident engagement, which is based on something very simple, which are the three resident engagement questions that we should always be asking ourselves, right? One is, are we engaging everyone? In 2022, there is absolutely no reason that you all as professionals cannot answer that simple question. Are we engaging everyone? And I know that years ago, like two, three years ago, some of us might be thinking about, oh, well, you know, tracking attendance is something for nursing homes because there's a compliance component. Let me tell you, this is uh, unacceptable in terms of behavior. And it is my duty as the CEO of Link Senior and kind of advocating for better activity in life enrichment out there. This does not cut it anymore. Our residents deserve better. Our families expect better. And we as professional ought to think about how can we make sure that the basic aspect of our job description, the basic aspect of our work is accomplished. So tracking attendance is not about compliance. Tracking attendance is about making sure that one, everybody is engaged, right? Which is the core aspect of person-centered care and core aspect of what we want to do for our residents and what our residents deserve. The second aspect is are we doing our work based on who our residents are? Again, honoring preferences. And finally, are we promoting well-being? So with that in mind, and with these three questions kind of boiling down engagement and what we do when we show up in a senior living community, what are the key metrics that we ought to think about? And again, two simple numbers. We have for some time now, at least you know, almost, well, two years now, promoted the idea that a community should thrive to engage 85% of its population. The reason why it's not 100% is that 100% is sometimes impossible for different reasons. Um, you know, our residents moving, uh, uh, might be changing level of care, we might have staffing changes, we might have, for example, social isolation measures that change over the course of the month. And so I'm not saying that 100% should not be our goal. It should always be our goal. But we should be hitting at least 85% every single month. right? And just to give you an idea here, this is not based on us just thinking 85% is the number. It is after analyzing years of data from our client base and seeing that it is possible, even through the pandemic. The second number is minutes of resident engagement per day. So if some of you are returning from our webinars, you might have seen some of our presentation by uh, Dr. Jennifer Stelter, uh, who heads, who's a chief engagement officer of our Resident Engagement Institute. And so this 35 minutes of resident engagement uh, per day is based on three data sets. One is us analyzing our client base and seeing how professionals like you every day, what they do and what they're able to do. One data set, so basically we've proven that it is possible. The second piece was 
a very large study that we did uh, with a tool called RICE, the Resonant Engagement Index uh, Score. This was the result of interviewing more than 700 of professionals like you last year. And so we saw that that number there was 45, so relatively higher, and also basing it on uh, uh, evidence out there. So we perused and researched all of the data sets and studies that we could find out there that were published. And ultimately, if you average out these different data sets, it shows that in senior living, a, uh, a um, smart goal, right, that it is achievable, that is measurable, that is achievable, um, is about 36 minutes. So we kind of um, round it up. And so we are actively promoting the idea that all of us, all of you, should be creating environments, creating systems where we are engaging residents 35 minutes per day. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out. We're very passionate about this. We believe that this is the future and we are actively building the future towards that, making sure that all of you can be proud of the work that you're doing, proud of the experience that you're creating to your residents, because ultimately that is what you want and again, what they, what they really deserve. If you want any more information based on this, uh, we have a lot of data, we have a lot of tools to provide you with, uh, feel free to reach out. A lot of it is actually already on our website or in our, some of our past webinars, but please uh, feel free to reach out. And so Martina in the chat here is asking 35 minutes MRG group and individually combined. That is correct, Martina. In the, ultimately, if you think about every residence that you have in your community, all of them should have been given the opportunity to engage 35 minutes, each of them. It doesn't matter if it's through groups or through one-on-ones. Um, as you can see from the previous slides, we have different data and obviously it changes from one level of care to the other. For example, in memory care, we're doing much more one-on-ones than we might be doing in assisted living. But ultimately, um, the average in quote-unquote supportive living should be 35 minutes, okay? <clears throat> And Louise Montgomery is sharing something. Yes, absolutely. So Louise saying, is saying in the chat, this engagement can come from care and others. Louise, I would, I would actually make it further argument that we alone cannot do it, right? Activities alone cannot do this. We need to, quote unquote, enable or further interdisciplinary work. And uh, Louise agrees 100% in the chat. We alone, from the staffing numbers that I shared with you to, uh, before, cannot do it. Our organization, with our help, need to make sure that all of our team members are engaging residents. And so at Link Senior, we love the idea of promoting that the fact that activity professionals are, quote unquote, CEOs, chief engagement officers. And so that goes with the fact that uh, we should be, all of us, engaging. Uh, and then Rene Connor has a question about 35 MRG for LTC residents. Rene, I'd love to continue the discussion with you. It depends a little bit on the level of care, and the, um, but basically for uh, the typical skilled environment, uh, the average, um, it, it is about 30, I think 36 minutes. Now in skilled nursing homes, you know, sometimes we have more um, uh, residents living with cognitive change. Some of us are, have more short term. So again, we would love to uh, have a discussion with you on that. But by default, I think that the nursing home setting was 36 minutes. Um, and then Megan is sharing the fact that we have questions in the chat, in the Q&A, so I'll get to that in a second. Um, So Susan had a question about the engagement uh, for 11 minutes. Uh, this was a CDC report. Again, it's part of these slides that will be shared with you. Uh, so feel free to check them out or uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions, happy to answer them. And 
Uh, Susan Ostrovsky was is asking, what is um, agreed upon definition of engagement? That's one of my personal favorite questions. If you look at it from a clinical perspective, engagement is a stimuli. This is how Dr. Jiska Cohen Mansfield explains it. We think that it's actually more than that, and this is why we proposed the definition earlier today, which is this idea of collaborating, right? So collaborating with our engagement based on their preferences and um, and personal data points is uh, is is what true engagement is about. And so Diane Barry is asking, does the independent activity pursuit falls under that? Absolutely. Any type of engagement that helps the person find purpose, that helps them being connected to who they are and what they like, is considered engagement. And um, Nancy Hall has a comment here, which I'll echo, is that one of the big challenges that interdisciplinary work seems to be collecting, one of the challenges is collecting the data. I would uh, agree to this that it's a challenge, but I would disagree on the fact that it's not impossible. Many providers we work with use technology, use data to enable that. And I think that if you think of the fact that you or we are clinical chief engagement officer, and that engagement is so important that it needs to be driven at the C-level, then all of the other things will fall into place. We've seen many organizations enable dining services, maintenance, um, care in that engagement initiative. So with that, <clears throat> let me just carry on a little bit with our presentation today, which is <clears throat> what, what we believe is the future and why we are so excited about the work that you do, that we all do together. If you think, if you, if you pause two seconds and think the fact, think about the fact that today we are in the very few first days of 2022, and you try to imagine, you know, what does, for example, 2025 look like or 2026, right? Like, let's just skip a few, uh, um, you know, some of the current challenges that we have. I love the idea. We love the idea that engagement is medicine. Right. We love the idea that engagement is sometimes actually better than medicine. I remember very well, we had uh, Marvell Adams, who's the chief engagement officer from Kendall uh, Senior Living. He was part of our summit in, in last June. And some of you might remember, he shared this story about the fact that as we walk into our communities, an activity director should be uh, perceived to be as important as a nurse, a med tech distributing medicine, right? Because ultimately, both professionals provide something essential to our elders, right? And I think that this goes back a little bit to what Susan was saying initially about making sure that all of our team members are helping. We are essential. We are super important. And with that being said, you know, the path to the social prescription model is enabling a world where, again, the social piece, the psychosocial piece, is as important as medicine or sometimes more important. <clears throat> now, you know, is this crazy? Is this, is this too much to think about the fact that our work in activities is as important or more important than medicine. And I would argue absolutely not. I will tell you that this is coming, a world where what you do is valued so much, like I shared, that is coming and it's coming fast. If you look at other countries, for example, in Europe, the UK, for example, has a plan to enable social prescribing, right? We, if you look at other industries, there are, if you look at Diabetes 2, there are apps today that you can download onto your iPhone that will give you quote unquote lifestyle prescriptions, recommendations for you to conduct your day that are um, reimbursable by your insurance. Right? So your doctor 
can write a prescription to you. Now, why would we think about using a medical word, like prescribing, right, to recommend something that is psychosocial? And I think the idea is not to, quote unquote, say that the medical world is more important or the psychosocial model is, is, uh, is more important. I think the, the reason why we want to think about, quote unquote, prescribing is this whole idea of working together. I'm sure that many of you on the line today are nurses, many of you are activity professionals, and all of you would understand that we're all important. And what is important is not to say, well, I am better or these people aren't as good as I am. It is about collaborating. Remember the first, one of the very first slides that I shared, it's us collaborating with our elders, but it's also us collaborating together to improve the well-being of our residents. And so, you know, this is not 10 years down the line. We believe that within, within the coming a couple of years, some of, our provide, some of us and some of our providers are going to see models where an activity professional is respected as much as our nursing a professional, and they, both of them, work together. And I can tell you this because we are seeing this within our client base today, right? We are seeing uh, organizations understand and value so much engagement that they get to work together all hand in hand. And in many instances, hopefully most instances, for example, music is uh, perceived as an intervention, a non pharmacological intervention and is the first modality uh, even before, for example, an antipsychotic medication. So I know there's still a lot of work to be done. Again, I talk to professionals like you every day, and I, I know that sometimes we're unfortunately very far from that. But I can tell you that this is coming. And you know, when I was telling you, when I was sharing with, with you our wish at Link Senior, which is may the age be with you, part of it is also the idea that we as a society continue to elevate the respect we have for our elders. And that is true respect, right? Ultimately, the more we are person-centered, the more we respect our elders, the more our work in activities will be uh, uh, respected as well. <clears throat> I love the chat. Um, so I was seeing a comment about somebody that was saying that this is achieved in some of the community. So thanks for sharing that. Now, again, you know, some of you might think, well, this is kind of just, this is kind of, uh, it's not happening. It's too far down the line. And I would argue, no, it's not. It's, it's actually what you do every day, right? <clears throat> again, this is a, uh, this is a simplification, but this is another view of what's called API, which is assess plan, implement, and uh, evaluate. And it's basically what we do in terms of activities, right? We want to get to know our residents, plan, engage them, and evaluate our work. And this is how we enable a model, a model that is quote-unquote prescriptive, right? Our work as activity professional, again, is to make sure that every resident is engaged based on who they are. So every day, whether you like it or not, you are actively working to quote unquote prescribe engagement, right? You are doing it every day, believe it or not. So the idea here is not that we're starting from scratch, we're not. The idea is to continue acknowledging the amazing work that you do. It is to continue getting credit for the work that you do. This is why we're so uh, passionate about helping you get data, right? Without data, it's much more difficult. And then once you have the data, it's all about optimizing. And some of you might recognize that this is a cycle, right? We want to get to know, plan, engage, and evaluate, and then we want to start again. And so the more we do that, and I say we, not us, one person, but as an industry, as an organization, the more we do that, the more we learn, the more we improve, right? And now, for some of you that might be quote unquote at a loss or not really knowing where to start, 
I'd like to share with you three things, which are kind of things that I've already repeated, but I'd like to kind of emphasize them a little bit more, which is if I was to start in the community today, right? Say, so I take it a new job, regardless of where the community is from quote unquote zero to hero, right? There are three things that you can do today to elevate this, right? Even if the even if the community is not doing such a great job. And these three things, again, they're not new, but they're really important and they're the basic fundamental tenets. One is we have to enable interdisciplinary work. Like Rene and Susan and many of you have highlighted, your work today, if you're not getting help from an other department, is simply impossible. Now, the great thing is, and this is one of the silver lining of our uh, of this pandemic is that this has been improving and I'll share a data point on that after in, in, in a couple of slides. But we need to enable interdisciplinary work. We have to be data driven. If you are not capturing data today, please talk to us, please send us an email, please communicate with other professionals to understand how you start. Right? And then the third one is technology. Obviously, Link Senior is a technology company, so we, we're kind of slightly biased, but I would make an argument here that, you know, in 2022, there's absolutely no reason to be spending hours and days searching the web for engagement. There is absolutely no reason for us to be managing our department with paper. And I would just encourage you to think uh, slightly beyond um, that aspect, which is how can we use technology to augment the work that we all do? So, you know, as I shared, interdisciplinary work is where it all starts, right? So how can we as organizations continue using this trend that we're seeing through COVID, which is uh, making sure that all of our teams are helping us. So again, this is a trend. Please take a snapshot of this with your phone, uh, share it with your team. If you're not seeing enough of that today, download uh, the, the, the slides, or, um, but make sure please communicate with your other department because this is the first uh, step to it. And this is how we start again. You know, this is a repeat of some of one of the earliest slides that I had with you. You know, I just changed the words here because just to emphasize how much sometimes it is impossible if we are only one, uh, one, one, one in our uh, department and one doing the work. The second piece, which is really important, is data. You know, there's this simple idea, which is what is measured improves, right? If we don't measure, we're simply not going to improve. We'll never know where we are and we'll never do the work that we want to do and our residents deserve. And we know this really well on Link Senior because we did the work of doing a whole clinical study with amazing outcomes. This was pre, previous, pre to COVID, pre, uh, previous to COVID. But as you can see, some of these outcomes are amazing, right? And this is what we all want to achieve now with our residents. So besides, you know, Link Senior or other technology, please consider measuring things, using tools to achieve this, because all of us need to get more credit for the amazing work that we do. And then the last piece is actually technology, right? So again, whether you're considering Link Senior or anything else, we in 2020, 2022, we have to be using some kind of tool to enable the work that we do, right? And this is the proof. This was a study done, again, through the right effort. As you can see, more than 700 organizations took part of it. And basically, this is the proof that we need to collect preference data electronically, right? If some of you are still using paper, please advocate strongly to use anything else but paper. Move to something electronic regardless of what it is because this is how you'll do more or what you love to do, which is, again, create individual plans for residents, build communities and groups. This is essential in um, 
as we continue navigating these different ways of COVID. And obviously, you know, when we use an electronic engagement platform, we feel good about the work that we do, right? We report that we're engaging residents in, in, uh, in a person-centered way based on their preferences. And we just know simply if we're doing our work, right? That feels good. So with that being said, um, I'd like to also emphasize the fact that technology is a way for us to augment our work. And uh, I'd love to give a shout out to Michelle and all of the team at Kendo at Oberlin. Um, through the pandemic, again, they used technology. Lynx Senior was one of them, but they used many different types of technology. And they were really strategic, again, about thinking about how can we engage our residents, our elders better. And in this particular case, look how cool, look at these amazing outcomes they were able to do, right? They were able to multiply the numbers of one-on-ones by four, right? They were able to save 165 hours of staff time per month. This is essential, right? Because the bulk of this data, I'm sorry, the bulk of these hours, sorry, will then be redeployed either by coaching our team members and or engaging our residents better, right? So again, think of this goal of 35 minutes of residence engagement per day. This is totally achievable if we enable uh, technology, if we enable interdisciplinary work, and if we use data to, uh, to measure and improve our work. So with that being said, let me share with you a couple more thoughts about how we, again, continue elevating this discussion. At Link Senior, as you can see, we, we have tons of different initiatives and, and ways we can help you. Um, obviously, some of them are these activity strong webinars, and, and please continue coming, and I'll share a couple of announcements on that in a second. But I think that for us to continue leading the charge in this data-based, data-driven, sorry, evidence-based uh, methodology. Some of you might have seen, we're very proud of the fact that last year we released, we, we initiated the first of its kind, Resident Engagement Institute. And the whole idea is to promote this future of the social prescription, right? The whole idea is to think about this is the future we know it's happening. We see these different pieces happening either in different countries, in different industries. We see some of our clients doing this work already. You know, why not all partner together and help you by providing you the tools, providing you with some of the data sets, providing you easy access to some of the leading research out there. So part of this institute is also a very important faculty uh, group, which are experts, international experts, and some of which you'll see soon on some of our webinars, but international experts, so we can all partner and continue to elevate uh, this discussion. So again, this is just an inv invitation for us, as I mentioned earlier in the, at the beginning of my presentation today, this is an invitation for us to continue to collaborate. I personally, Charles, I am so excited about the work coming up, but I also want to acknowledge how hard things are right now. And in the end, and this, this is probably something that some of you might have heard me say before, I am deeply thankful of the work that you all do. I am proud to work with professionals like you and, you know, our passion at Link Senior is to continue to elevate the work that you all do and to continue giving you the tools so you can turn around and again do the work that you're passionate about and do the engagement, create the environment that your residents deserve it. So again, really thank you for the work that you do. A couple more notes about um, about Activity Strong, which is that we've just completely revamped our Activity Strong website. 
And I'll just take you there in just a second so you can see how it looks like. If you go to activitystrong.com, um, this is a website, and we also have a Facebook group. Please feel free to join the Facebook group as well. Uh, actually, I can, Megan, if you don't mind dropping the Facebook group as well in the chat. Um, but let me share with you one of the changes that we brought as we have many questions about upcoming events. If you go on the, under the events tab now, you'll see that we have a whole calendar of upcoming events. And please check it up, uh, uh, check it frequently as we continuously update it. Um, I want to encourage you to think about joining us on January 18th, where we will have Dr. Cameron Camp and Gary Johnson take us through one of the things that I love, which is the application of the Montessori method in the field of staff engagement and dementia care. So that's our upcoming session. The other session, uh, other big event that I would strongly recommend that you consider is in February, and that is uh, February 15th. And that is the first of its kind Validation World Congress. Some of you might be familiar with the work of Naomi File. Um, it's called the Validation Method. It's now led uh, by Vicky, the Executive Director of the Validation Training Institute. And this will be a half-day event all about celebrating 40 years, right? 40 years of innovating in dementia care and setting the path for the next 40 years of dementia care. So please join us. Again, all of these events are free. We're providing you CEU so you can continue your career's advancement. And with that, uh, I want to thank you all for the amazing work that you do and wish you all the best. And as I shared with you initially, may the age be with you. If you have any questions on any of the slides today, please feel free to reach out. Uh, let me just kind of put my uh, email here before and my contact information. Feel free to reach out. Uh, on our website and all of you uh, thank you for the amazing work that you provide thanks for listening to the activity strong executive edition series powered by link senior find more resources and webinar information at btgvoice.com